Welcome back, everybody. Um, back on the Cadillac. The last video, I cut it short. Um, and then I done a bunch more stuff on the Cadillac. So, uh, yeah, let's get you into this video, and I'll get you caught up. And then, once it's caught up, we'll walk around this thing right quick and look at it. And I'll show you what I've done. And then we're going to take this thing out and do a little riding. I'll tell you about that here in a little bit. So here's what we got on this side. I got it all back together last night. Went together absolutely perfect. No big deal. Uh, if you'll notice, there's not a fender flare on this side, front or back. Um, so we're going to remedy that. Uh, I want the truck to match all the way around. I actually don't like the look of the fender flares. And they don't, by the way, they do not make fender flares for the Escalades. That front vent doesn't really clear the... Uh, fender flare so we have to modify it and when I bought these I just bought the cheapest set I could get because I didn't even know if it'd work but nonetheless that's what I got I got them for an avalanche like an 08 up avalanche so we're gonna go ahead and put the back one on um, I went yesterday and had to buy some hardware because I lost it all these things I've had these things laying around for seven years um, so I bought the hardware yesterday it cost me 50 bucks I don't know what happened to the hardware originally came with it. Um, I did see it when I moved, but God, I looked yesterday for, I don't know, an hour and a half, couldn't find it. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can't get this just tossed on there right quick. Uh, it can be a real pain, so I'm gonna set y'all up on time lapse. You don't need to see me struggle for the next hour. <laughs> That thing went on there well the uh, neighbors are still having a great time over there <laughs> i ain't gonna slow them down none but it just means i can't talk a whole lot but that turned out good the only thing left is clean the wheel and get it on uh, but i want to do the front wheel flare let's look at it i've got this wheel flare just held up here you can see how it just covers up that uh, vent i'm actually going to take a pencil and just mark it and we're going to heat that up and just bend it down around that and put the quilting on this and bolt it in place and uh, then i'll have all the wheel flares on this truck for the first time ever all right so here's what we're going to do we're going to take the heat gun and we're just going to heat this plastic up and use some of the tools i brought out here uh, this will have to trim it actually i thought i had a screwdriver but we'll make that with a socket or a screwdriver just kind of push it into it until we get the shape we want and uh yeah let's keep working with it we'll get it they don't make this so no matter what it looks like it's fine because nobody can compare it to a factory one right you saw me heat that up and bend it Out where it's got to be that gives us plenty of room but we're going to come in here and i'll have to trim that up so this will sit flat it won't sit flat yet so we'll trim that back and uh, i'll just kind of tweak it and then we'll get this thing on here -hoo -hoo. yeah it looks good let me step back so you can get a come a full view here there we go take a look at that finally i've got all four fender flares on this truck does it make it a wide body i'm going with that we have a wide body escalade let's go over and take a look at this again I got all this kind of bent down and out of the way and it, that uh, all fits in there good i got all that bolted in and whatnot that front wheel looks good we got to turn our attention to this back wheel also it's getting ready to rain and today has to be our last day a neighbor has stopped uh, partying. They are having a great time. I, 
there is not enough joy in the world. Do not uh, hamper other people's joy when they're having it. Just don't do it. There's not enough joy in the world. So, let me just catch up on this wheel. She'd be nasty. That black area right there, I got off with um, Scotch, or not a Scotch Bright pad, steel wool. And that's what I'm going to have to finish it with. Let me show you the back. The back, th back side, I did a good portion of. We're going to polish it when I'm done. I don't have a ton left, I don't know, half or so uh, left to take off. So I'm going to take it outside. And I've tried all the wheel cleaners I had. I bought that Diablo. Nothing wants to touch this because it's just so caked on there. Um, you know, I don't blame any of the company's products for not working on this. It's really, really tough. Uh, best thing I found was Dawn dishwashing liquid and this and just scrub, scrub, scrub till it's off. So I'm going to go ahead and scrub the rest of this and then I'm going to hit it with a uh, polishing wheel just to shine the inside up and then we'll do the outside. I'm going to do the outside. I'm not going to show you this because it is absolutely the most boring thing you've ever seen and nobody wants to watch it. I guarantee it. I'll show you when I'm done though and uh, we'll get it polished up and on the truck. I got the wheel back on. Y'all ready for this? Yeah, it's not finished. Um, it's getting ready to pour down rain, and I got to have this truck this week. So uh, it, I just put the wheel back on. I've tightened both sides. Other side looks great. Golly, the front of this thing looks so much better now. Let's get a good shot of it. Yeah. Yeah, it, uh, it's just fine. I've got to put one more speaker grill in. I've already put three of them in. I'll put the last one in and I will have all that hooked up. The only thing left I've got to do is uh, put the windshield wiper arms on. I'm not even going to include you all in that. You don't need to see it. But I just thought you, uh, you'd you want to know where I had to stop here. By the way, look how much better that speaker grill looks. Woo! That was definitely worth the effort. One more thing. Wiper blades in. Um, yeah. Moments away from the storm. Well, here she sits. Uh, some of the things I've done to it since y'all last saw it as I clean this wheel. Take a look at this. This is the one that was all brown and nasty looking, it had all that iron deposit on it. I've got about 12 hours in cleaning and polishing this wheel, but yeah, she turned out all right. I'm totally okay with it. Um, I also ended up having to put a caliper on this side. This one was dragging once I got it back together. The brakes worked, but it was dragging. And then the hose, the caliper hose on this side stripped out. And it stripped the ferrule nut uh, on the line that goes on the rear end. I, I replaced, had to build one and replace that, whatever. I didn't record all this. I just didn't have time to fool with it. So, but I wanted to show you what I'd done there. Uh, I have cleaned, clean, cleaned on this truck. It's had its second bath now. It's not perfect. It really needs a buffer ran across it, but it is looking better. There's that front wheel it's still looking great. So I polished the headlights as well. I just ran a polisher over them right quick. I, I had sanded this side down some, and I just wanted them to look better for now. That headlight still burn out. Uh, I put a ballast on it just to see if it would change. It does not. It still doesn't work. So I think I'm going to buy a set of aftermarket headlights for it. And do an led conversion to it in you know maybe in a few weeks or months or years who knows uh the other thing i did was clean the interior some it's much better just vacuumed it out and cleaned it i'm getting ready to read the uh, codes for the lights that are on the dash it's got several but my scan tool was dead 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 so it's running right now but i cleaned the inside of the windshield and stuff like that same back here just you know basic cleaning one day one day i'm going to fix these rockers uh, the only thing i've got left i'd like to clean that back window i'm not going to do it right now i want to go for a ride so we got one more thing to throw on the truck before we leave this truck came with factory rubber floor mats and i washed them not that you can tell because they're already dirty again but I, I washed them off good before i put them in the truck here i'm gonna throw them in right quick and uh, yeah, then I think we're gonna go on a ride. So we're scanning for codes here. I thought we'd see what we got. And let's see. You 
engine control module. That's what it says. Engine oil pressure sensor circuit high voltage. I don't know what that means. We'll clear it and see if it comes back. Uh, electronic brake control module is abnormal. Left front wheel speed sensor circuit system disabled information stored invalid serial data receiver we may be able to clear that and that may still be okay if not we may have to put a front left wheel speed sensor on this thing no big deal that's pretty much it um it also i know it has codes for uh the airbag but guess what i don't see them here so we're gonna clear all codes and see what comes back because the battery had been dead in it we started it we've had a lot of issues blah 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 but i think that'll be okay so we're gonna do that and we're we're out so let's go take it for a ride and see what comes back i'm sure some of it will and then we can make a real diagnosis from that later on maybe in another video not today well i'm loaded up ready to go trucks running i put floor mats in uh, they man, I, I forgot how nice these swarm mats are. They fit so good. But anyways, um, we got to stop and get some fuel. I'm gonna get a drink for the road, and maybe a road snack of some sort. Because I don't know how long this is gonna be. It may only be three hours, and it may be seven. I don't know. So um, I'm gonna tell you what I know about the trip and the road we're gonna take and stuff. So where I live. We're really close to the Great Smoky Mountain National Park. And Cades Cove is the most visited portion, I think, of the park. If I'm, I think the whole country is the most visited national park in the country. Uh, it's free to go there, but it's not free to park. So, you know, if you're coming, just remember that. But Cades Cove is an 11 mile loop and it's in a cove. And if you don't know what a cove is, basically there's mountains all around you and you're just like in a valley kind of area. It's beautiful. It's an older community. My family actually comes from there. My family had uh, homes there. And at some point they were like, yeah, y'all got to get out. And they gave them like $12 and they had to leave. But anyways, so I never knew, I had never heard this, but evidently there's two roads that come out of there that off that 11 mile loop that you can take and one of them comes to Townsend uh, which is the town we'll actually drive through to get there but the other one cuts across and goes to the dragon so you come out at the top side of the dragon somewhere and it's a one-way road it's and they said high clearance vehicles required I don't know if that means trucks or how high I don't I have no idea but what I'm telling you is we're going to go find out because I want to take my family up there in the truck when the fall leaves start to change and stuff. I think it'll be a beautiful ride and hopefully it's not too bad, but I didn't want to take the whole family up there and be like, Oh no, we got stuck or what, you know, it's too much, uh, off camber driving or whatever for the, for the kids. I don't, you know, I got three little kids or well, my oldest isn't that little my others really aren't. But I didn't want them up there with my wife and all of us stuck. So we're going to do a pre-ride, basically, and check it out. And then on the way back, we have uh, a place called the Foothills Parkway. Uh, we're going to probably stop up there for some pictures because you can see all the city from up there. It is spectacular. The sky is pretty clear today, so I think it's going to be really good. Nonetheless, here we go. Let's go get some gas and get a drink and hit the road. Well... $75 in fuel later. That's right. Premium. Gotta love the $4 and 39 cents a gallon that costs um, Nonetheless got to put premium in a six in a six two to keep it running good. So I did got us a, a Drink and a snack for later. And we're gonna head on out when we get up towards towns and I'll cut the camera on and We'll do some time-lapse up through there. It's beautiful. And then once we uh, head up through the mountains, you'll see it's gorgeous Let's get after it
Well, we made it through Townsend and it is a beautiful small town right there. If you're ever in the Smokies and you want a nice quiet place to stay, uh, it's a great place. There's a little hotel or actually maybe two, I don't know. But there's some stuff there now. It used to be a tiny town with nothing on it. So anyways, uh, we got some traffic passing us. I pulled over so we could uh, do some riding or some talking and before we do the riding. Yeah, there we go. And anyways, the road from Townsend up to Cades Cove is kind of windy and, and it's beautiful up through here. It follows uh, a part of a little river here and it is just gorgeous. Y'all will not get the full effect from riding with me in the truck, but uh, I thought I'd show you the little creek kind of from where we're at right here, and then we're gonna cruise on up. Uh, if you'll be able to see the uh, river down there, and it goes up and just keeps on meandering. All this stonework was all done by hand in the 30s or 40s, I don't know, whenever they did the park up here. I don't, Google it, they'll tell you. Uh, but the stonework for all the bridges and stuff up here is beautiful. There's even a tunnel we go through. So let's uh, go on up and see what we can see. We've made it up here. We're gonna ease through. Right here to the left, there's always, uh, or usually horses in the morning, but they take them out and ride and stuff, so they probably won't even be here, but they usually keep them over here in this uh, field. This is just a little one lane road up through here. It's really peaceful. Sometimes you'll see horses out here, of course, but then You'll see uh, turkey. I think the last time we were up here, I think we saw 11 turkey or 12 turkeys. Uh, we came up one time and saw 22 bears. That's the most bear we've ever seen up here. It was 22, the most I've ever seen. And it was an amazing trip, so. But you don't always see a bear or a deer. But we've seen a bunch up here this year. We come up here a lot. It's a fun little trip for us. It's really close. And if you do come up here and you see a bear or a deer or whatever, just remember they're wild. This is not a zoo. Don't get too close. A bear can kill you. That's and and if if they don't kill you, even if they uh, get too close and get into your food or whatever, that could lead to the end of their life. So, lots of people walk this and ride bikes up here and all kinds of stuff. So, who knows what we'll see. That was the donation box. You can donate, uh, and that helps keep up stuff up here. Keep, there's some employees and whatever up here, too. It's a little place you can stop and get ice cream and things at the end. Uh, we won't make it that far if we take Pearson Springs, so we'll see. Uh, hopefully, it's open. Should be.
going down Sparks Lane. I think there's a church maybe back there, if I remember correctly. And we're coming up on John Oliver's cabin, which is going to be over here to the right. Can't see it from here, but we're not going to stop. But it's way back up off the road. We'll walk back to it and explore the cabin and stuff. Uh, it, it's man, this is an awesome place. If you ever are looking for a place to vacation, this is a fantastic place to vacation. Come visit us. We love it. Look at the mountains. You're just in this bowl of mountains up here. They're just all around us. The field is just covered with all these little yellow flowers right now. It's just beautiful up here. Um, we're, we've not had a whole lot of rain this fall or summer for that matter. So I don't know if we'll get much of a uh, turning of the leaves up here. But if the leaves, if we get enough rain, the leaves up here are just gorgeous. People come from all over the world to come see this. Uh, it just happens to be in my backyard. And that's really why I want to do this uh, Pearson Springs Trail. Because I think it's even more remote uh, for, for seeing the fall colors on the, on the trees and stuff. So hopefully, hopefully this ain't too bad and I can bring the family up in a few weeks when the leaves start to turn. But it is beautiful it is a gorgeous day currently it's only 75 degrees out or what they marked in that tree with a pink and a blue ribbon that's definitely been put there by like a park ranger or something maybe they something going on there I'm sure I really don't expect to see any animals out it's too far in the day. It's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So, it's one of those things where animals don't get out usually this time of day so much. It's usually in the morning and their evenings. But sometimes you get lucky and you get to see some in the middle of the day. When I bring the kids up, my wife and I and the kids come up. We try to come up early in the morning. We try to leave the house by like 8.30 or 9. That way we can be up here no later than 10. Uh, usually the earlier you come, the better you do for seeing the animals. I can remember coming up here as a kid, riding in the back seat of a station wagon. Uh, those are those are some of my earliest memories of going and doing stuff. I couldn't have been four years old, five, six, maybe max. Uh, the first memory I have coming up here, but I was definitely in the back seat of a, I believe, is a 1975 or 76 Malibu station wagon that my mom had. It was green with the wood grain, black interior. Uh, had a 400 small block in it. And I actually still have that 400 small block. It was the first motor I put in my very my very first car. I bought that car from her and pulled the motor out of it and put it in my first car, which was a 79 Camaro. And I pulled that motor out at some point and put a different engine in it. And I'm glad I did, otherwise I wouldn't still have it. But it's been a part, uh, as a young man of, you know, 17 or so, I took it apart. And it's all just sitting in the uh, place where I've got it apart. I took the main caps off of it. I don't know how they go or anything. Someday we're, I'm going to build that motor and put it in something. I don't know what, but we'll see.
speed limit up here is 20, but typically I do about 10. Because you can't see it if you're going 20. But you'll get some people up here in a very, very big hurry. This is not a place to be in a hurry. Just ease through it. Sometimes there'll also be a lot of cars up here. If there are animals, they'll stop, everybody will stop and it gets backed up. Just be patient if you're up here. Just be really patient with people. Um, it's a good time to practice what Jesus uh, basically told us a million times. Uh, is, you know, love thy neighbor like you do God and be patient is a big deal of that. So we got to be patient with people, be patient with ourselves and give each other grace. This and Costco are two of the places I like to practice grace. folks were, I do believe, from Wisconsin. Up here on the right is a primitive Baptist church. Uh, this one, I do believe I have relatives buried up here. I don't exactly know. It's a Methodist church. Uh, I don't exactly know how they were related to me. But I accidentally turned y'all off there for a second. But I can remember coming to that uh, church and looking at the cemetery with my aunt. It was this person was so and so, and they're related to so and so that we're related to. I don't know. If you're ever uh, wondering, this place up here is just absolutely stunning for history. But if you really think about it, it's it's not all good history. They did the federal government forced all these people out of their homes and it, they did not do them right in most people's opinions that were still here. There was a gentleman that lived up here, or lady, I'm not really sure, well into the uh, 70s or 80s maybe, I don't know, into their 70s or 80s, uh, after everybody else had left, but I don't exactly know that story. I'm sure you can Google all this. I'm just kind of telling you stuff I remember from what I've heard as a child and whatever. This is what we always call the halfway point, but it's not halfway, but you can actually take uh, Hyatt Lane and it does cut the, uh, the entire park down to seven miles for the loop instead of 11. I've been down that little side road, it's gravel. It's, it's very, very well maintained. So if you're ever up here and you're like, ah, we're done, whatever, you can go down through there and it cuts it in half. You cut off a lot of stuff. Or if you're just like, I gotta get out of here, you know, things happen. But you could get like, I've had my minivan down there, it's fine. Right, we just passed the I do believe the road that goes back to Townsend where we came through earlier. If we were going that way, we would have took a ride back there. We also just passed another church. I don't know that I have any family there, but I might. <laughs> uh, you know, up here, there wasn't a whole lot of families up here. I, I would say maybe 50 or so. 50 bloodlines or something like that. Maybe 100 at some point. Look at this. Just stunning. They got a park truck ranger truck out here. I don't know. There's people going pretty slow up here. There may be maybe it's an animal. We'll see. Or maybe they're just doing maintenance. 
Oh yeah, they tagged this fence too. I'm going to pull in up here at this pull off and give you all kind of a view of the mountains from here. It is spectacular. very blessed that I get to live here. I just kind of wanted y'all to get a view of that. We're going to get back on the road. I don't have all day to do this, so we're going to get back to it. Folks from, from Alabama, West Virginia, people travel from all over the U.S. and the world to come here, so well worth it. field that's coming up it's just so yellow out there there's all these little yellow flowers just in bloom right now it's so beautiful I assure you this camera does not do this place justice
we're actually fairly close up here to where we're gonna go and uh, yeah we'll see how it goes hopefully like I said hopefully the roads open it should be I don't know that it, any reason it wouldn't be but since I've never taken it I just don't know Look at the turkeys right here in the road. A mama and two babies. Oh, three babies. Yeah, that's cool. Hey, we're gonna see some wildlife. I don't know if we'd see any. bridge up here it just goes over a little creek kind of neat looking you know, you'll, you'll be able to see this thing it's a wooden bridge well we're getting ready to be at our turn so normally we up here we would have just went left and that would have been our trail our path oh there might actually be something up here to see I was wrong. It's on up. We're really close though. Let's see what's over here. Oh, there's a fox right here. Look at it. Sorry, folks. Yeah, he's just hanging out. That's neat. Well, that's the first time I've ever been up here and seen a fox that close. I've seen them out in the fields and stuff. Let me jump back here and stand here. That was neat. We've seen four turkeys and a red-tailed fox. It's a pretty good trip. Yeah, ask me. Especially for three, um, it's almost 320 now.
be able to see it in the videos, but there's always a bunch of butterflies up here. Almost, I, I can't ever think of a time I've come up here and didn't see, you know, a ton of butterflies. All right, so up here is where we're gonna take our turn. Normally we'd have, we would have just followed this road on out and it's another five miles or so to the end. But we're not going that way. Some branch road straight ahead. That's where we'll be headed. Hey, there's other people headed that way. Let's go with them. We'll go slow and let them go. So some of that dust will settle. I don't have to drive through that the whole time. Can't imagine this whole road's going to be this nice. One lane bridge ahead. Oh yeah, this is cool. Also a wooden bridge. Just over a little creek. so much new stuff or at least new to you stuff I'll be honest I didn't think we were we would have seen another vehicle at all but there's these two and then one above them. One there on the left. I hope they know they're not supposed to go back. There's plenty of room to pass though. Oh, there's a 
Henry Whitehead Place. That's cool. Those folks came from Pennsylvania to see it. Stay here just a minute and let those guys go on so I'm tired of having dust in my mouth. This has been a very tame road. I don't know why they tell you online it has to be a high clearance vehicle. Oh well, whatever. go back further the road's definitely getting smaller and this is beautiful 
check this out. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? My goodness. I've had y'all on some sort of zoom now for a while. I don't know when that happens, so if it was too bad, sorry. Back on the road now. We're on a trail. Whatever you want to call it, it's a road. This is a road, people. At this point, I thought it'd be more of a trail. Another cool little bridge, that same stream. Another place. This that's neat. Look at this. Yeah, it's so neat. side of the creek here. There's some poles now and then up through here to navigate. There's nothing crazy though. <laughs> Definitely do this in that Lincoln Town car just fine. This must be Pearson Branch Road. Pearson Branch Road. Unimproved, primitive access, one way, no rear entry, full drive with high clearance, vehicles recommended, US Highway, eight miles ahead. Y'all ever been down that way? <laughs> Wish me luck. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Love the sign, travel at your own risk, limited emergency services available. Let's go see what we can get into. Yeah, this is more like what I was thinking.
reminds me of just an old road that just got abandoned at some point. Maybe it was a logging road or something, I don't know. They did log all these mountains. All this is a, you know, all, a new growth forest or whatever they, I think that's what they call it, new growth, not old growth. Uh, there are some really old trees here, but most of them are less than 150 years old and that's not old for a tree. Oh yeah. I dig it. there for this truck. back there it wasn't too bad but I wasn't paying attention at first I was trying to roll us over so I could watch the trans temp as it climbs we're going to hit this with a little bit of some more speed right here there we go trans temp is at 196 but we're at the top of that hill now it'll cool right back down One of the improvements I need to make to this truck is adding a transmission oil cooler whenever I do pull the transmission out and have it, I don't know, I may buy a brand new one or have it rebuilt or whatever, I don't know, but that'll happen someday. that guy in that dually didn't come this way.
I've actually put the, man, uh, the transmission in manual so I can put it in second gear for this because we just keep pulling up this hill here and it's been in third so it pulls better in second so I've geared her down some. saw a stake that said one I don't know if that's one mile uh, there is it's an eight mile trail I don't know I wasn't really paying much attention but I just saw that maybe it's a mile marker if it is we've done one mile we got seven to go It is beautiful back here. Man, am I happy I took this drive, ride so far. Get y'all back up a little more. You keep falling down. I just want to make sure that you get a good view.
talking about my family earlier. Uh, part of my family that lived back up here in the cove probably lived more in an area like this. But they were bootleggers, you know, making that Tennessee moonshine. Uh, you know, my family's not always been on the right side of the law. Just saying. That's a big dip right there. If you didn't have good clearance, you'd have had a rub. crossing right here it ain't nothing crazy but kind of cool some trees up here. Another turkey. Y'all see him? Yeah. We're in the woods now.
two. I'm going to assume that's two miles. On a trail. Gregory Bald Trail. Sheep Pen Gap and Gregory Bald. About a four mile hike. I guess you could ride up here and then go hiking. By the way, it's only 72 degrees back here in the woods. Just all the shade and stuff. Also, I mean, it wasn't a warm day out anyways, but it is beautiful back here. big gully beside us. tight turn Another water crossing. Oh, this has got a little waterfall to the right. You won't be able to see my, oh, I think you can see it there. How neat. big one right there. Holy moly.
wouldn't want to be up here if it was raining. Oh man, you wouldn't be able to drive, I bet. Kind of rough right there. Nothing crazy, but. out place here no big deal there's mile marker four that should be halfway folks some tracks in the mud right there somebody been through here Y'all get a lot of glare, don't you? Sorry about that. I don't know if I can help it at all. Let's see if this helps. Being in the shade helps more than anything, and I can't control that, so.
yeah, it's good right here. Has a little water crossing. It's not very big though. Big hole right there. again. I'm gonna have to take a uh, break. I'll be right back. 
So I had to stop and uh, empty the old bladder out. And I thought, you know what? Let's have a snack. Here's what we're gonna have. Y'all ready for this? I don't know if this is a southern thing or what. But around here, a lot of people put peanuts in their Coke. And I believe that's just a everywhere thing. I think everybody pretty much does it. But I prefer to put it in a Dr. Pepper. It's just a personal thing. So I, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this ready and we're going to ride on out. That's why I can eat and drive and have a little snack all at the same time. Yeah. I'll get this done. We'll get back on the road. Also, curious, just uh, make yourself a little funnel with your with your hand and it just pull them right in, just like that. Excellent. Let's get back on the ride. Definitely been somebody through here recently. Because everywhere there's water, there's it's tracked out of the puddle, or you know, out of the water where it's running across. You know what I'm saying? Words. Who needs those? This place is neat. Water's kind of deep on the right side over there where they've dammed it up.
That's a drop. By the way, the transmission temperature is back down to 172 degrees, just in case you're curious. I knew it'd go back down as soon as we uh, got through climbing that one portion of really steep hill. There's the only spot I've seen that was would be very, very hard to get just a standard vehicle up or even like a Jeep without a lift. I don't think you would make that spot right there without dragging.
motorcycle up here. We must be at the end of the road, I guess. I guess we made it. Be honest, I don't know which which way's down. We are officially turning on to 129. This is the Dragon. 318 curves and 11 miles. We won't see all of those on our way down the mountain, but we will see many. We went the wrong way, to go home at least.
drive Escalade like uh, some people push sports cars. I'm, I'm going to calm her down a little. pulling the boat but uh, you get that a lot up here because there it's there's a dam and everybody goes up to boats and does all the stuff
that's a doozy of a curve right there. Popo sitting back there. Porsches, that's awesome. There's one of the best curves on the Dragon. It's just a hairpin. Holy, it's awesome. Another little Porsche. Transmission is basically a neutral. All right, we're back. Good to go. Oh, we're stuck in second. This is what this transmission does. bottom down here we're gonna pull over turn it off turn it back on so we did make the correct turn out of uh, Parsons Springs which was to take a right and we are at the bottom of the uh, dragon now um, I kind of wanted to go left just to go all the way to the top, but it we were not far from the top even then. Um, there's a dam back there, and down here is uh, it, they, it's Fontana Dam. But down here is the uh, watershed. I don't know. Whatever comes after the dam where all the water is. Um, but we're going to go on down here and take a right and cross uh, Foothills Parkway. Couldn't remember what it was called. And there's some awesome views from there. We'll probably stop. I'm going to take some pictures of the truck up there for sure. But we'll get to look out over the town I live in. And I think that's neat. Look here. Same color and everything. How neat is that? Transmission shifting just fine.
close to the top of Foothills Parkway. I've pulled over. Uh, got a little mud on her, nothing crazy. But there's a place you can walk out on, I think they call it Look Rock. But I thought y'all might enjoy seeing that. And then we'll go up to the, the what everybody calls the large overlook or the big overlook. And we'll check the city out there. But I thought y'all would want to see this. Wait a minute, y'all have to take a look here. We have officially found the Sasquatch. All right, we can go on now. Let's take a look at this. You can see right about there is part of the lake that we were driving by earlier. Um, I exactly know where we started, but I think it was over there somewhere. It is beautiful up here. Cruise on up. the big lookout or big pull off or whatever and this is this is where I live you can just see over the city or town or whatever it's kind of far out but yeah how cool is that and at night the whole valley is just lit up with house lights and things like that it's super neat Hope y'all enjoyed that as much as me. There's a specific spot out there. Let's see if I can zoom y'all in. Not sure if you can see or not, but there's a tower and it's their Arconic Tower. Uh, it's just a local place that I, I mean, it's an easy place to spot. I believe that right there is our hospital. I live very close to that. But there y'all go. There's a look at a look at the valley that I live in. I think we'll take this uh, ride on home. Man, look at her! Isn't she beautiful? I love having my truck back. I, ho I hope y'all have enjoyed the truck content at least a little bit because man I am so happy to have this thing back let's go ahead and finish up the Foothills Parkway we ain't got far to go and we're at the bottom also that's basically where I started the driving video at was at the bottom of Foothills Parkway that way it's one big circle that we've just made long circle took us forever but man has it been a good time so uh, yeah let's go and see if we can't finish this
So that's it. Um, I had a great time. That was a fun ride. I don't know that I'll take my kids there, but I'm very, very glad I did it. It was uh, absolutely gorgeous. I hope y'all enjoyed it as much as I did, or even almost as much as I did. I'd be okay with that. Uh, got a little, got a little mud on the old truck. Nothing crazy. Uh, it's a pretty easy trail, really, but whew, if you used to get stuck back there with your kids and you couldn't get them out, and two of my kids don't walk, they're in wheelchairs, so what would you do if you got broke down? So those are things you just have to think about in life. I appreciate y'all watching, and I'll catch you on the next video. Yeah, what a great day. Folks, it's the next day, and we're back up in Cades Cove. I just thought I'd get y'all a shot of some bears. Yeah, they're right here at the edge of the road. How awesome is that?